horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty hi silver, the Lone Ranger. his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations, and nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! There's trouble on the trail ahead! It was a night of wind, rain, and thunder, the worst kind of a night for the horses that had to haul the overland stage towards Gregsville in Grant County. But in spite of the rain, the mail was coming through, and with it, two passengers. A flash of lightning revealed the oncoming stage to men who crouched at the side of the trail. Did you see it? Yeah, sure, I saw it. Do you think I'm blind? I've been watching that trail long enough. It's time we saw that stage. The rest of the boys are ready, aren't they? Expect them to fall asleep in this kind of weather. Not suspecting what was ahead, the driver urged the six strong horses on. Then suddenly, without warning, there were cracks of guns. Get a mind where you shoot. Don't get careless. Then, a short time later, a rider on a white horse drew alongside the stage. One man sat on the seat, flashing the horses on their way. He saw the white horse range alongside. A flash of lightning revealed the fact that the rider wore a mask. Then, masked man and white horse passed the stage and swept ahead. Come on, The masked rider's voice rang out in the teeming rain. The horse sped on, unmindful of the slippery mud and water-filled holes beneath the flying hoofs. In the county seat, Sheriff Morton sat at home with his daughter, his face heavily lined with worry and his eyes red-rimmed and tired from lack of sleep. Now, Pa, why don't you go to bed and get what sleep you can? And I've got to think, Betty. But Bill's on the job, and it's not likely that gang will hit tonight. Well, they wouldn't go out in this storm. Those ornery crooks would use this kind of night to their advantage, Betty. They know they couldn't be trailed. If I could only figure out why they're doing so many things. Stage robbing, busting into stores, burning houses, stealing cattle. Everything, including murder. Oh, such a storm. I'm not going to talk any more about it. Read it all you like your more. You'd grab a gun and go hunting crooks yourself if I let you. And that reminds me. I've let it be known that no one is to give you information. You're to keep out of this affair. Oh, Paul, I could help if you'd let me. No. If that storm had only... All gone wind, it's blowing open. It almost seemed as if someone had broken it open. Under the wind. I'll fix it so it'll stay closed. Hurry, Pa. The rain's coming in in buckets full. I'll have it fixed in the jiffy. Uh... Pa, what is it? Is there something out there? Wait, I'll help you fix the window. Stay you... where you are, Betty. Get wet. Well, I don't mind that. I'd sooner change my dress than have the rain all over the floor. Stay there. Oh, all right, Pa. Sheriff! Sheriff! Pa, 
Oh, that's Bill, your deputy. Let him in. Hurry up, Sheriff. I'm coming, Bill. Just a minute. Oh, great Scott, what a storm. Hey, Sheriff, Stay something's... Right where you are, Bill. I'm fixing this window. Stay there and drift. Don't move around. But I'll help you, Stay sir. Stay there, I said. I want water all over the floor. Help! Oh, Bill, there, leap. Won't blow open again. Pa, when the lightning flashed that last time, I, I saw a man's face. Nonsense. Sheriff, I came to tell now, you wait what... wait a minute, Bill. I did see a face. It was out there in the dark, beyond the window. It, it looked like an Indian. It's your imagination, Betty. Forget it. Bill, what's up? It's a stagecoach. Just came in. And a sorry a sight you never saw in all your life. What do you mean? Murder. Oh, murder? Doggone your hide, Bill. How many times have I got to tell you not to talk about things like that except in the office? Then get to the office. The sooner the better. Things are getting to a fine pass here in town. The guard and driver of the stage was both killed and the mail was taken. Colonel Jackson drove the stage in. Who in the thunder is Colonel Jackson? Well, he ain't really a colonel now. I reckon he was once. But he's here to investigate things. Came from Washington. Where is he? In your office. He's waiting there and he says it's mighty important that he sees you right away. Well, I'll be along in a minute. As soon as I get some boots on. I won't keep you waiting. Oh, sakes alive. i never seen a worse storm, Miss Betty. Bill, didn't you see a face outside the window? Well, I weren't looking, ma'am. Oh, I know there was someone there. Oh, now, shucks, Miss Betty. It might have been the wet leaves on a tree or something. Well, your paw stood right at the window. If there'd been anyone there, he'd have seen him. I wonder if he did. He was an awful long time at that window. Um, excuse me a minute, Bill. Now, where are you going? To the other room. I want to make sure Pa dresses warm enough. <laughs> the way things have been going of late, he's likely to forget his head if somebody doesn't mind him of it. Yeah. Oh, well, Betty... <laughs> Pa, I didn't mean to startle you. Well, uh, that is, I've just seen if there's any pipe tobacco in this jar. Well, you haven't had pipe tobacco there for years. Oh, that's so. <laughs> Forget about it. You couldn't smoke in rain like this. No, of course not. Well, I'll get along. Keep the house shut tight, Betty. I'll be back as soon as I can. Yes, Pa. Hey, come on, Bill. Let's get going. Right. Good night, Miss Betty. Good night. Good night, Pa. Good night, honey. Pa fibbed to me. He fibbed twice inside of ten minutes. Now, he saw someone outside. He must have. Ah, oh, he wasn't looking for tobacco. Why was he in that jar? Well, I'm gonna look and see you. Hmm. Something, huh? A bullet. It's a bullet. That Indian... Well, that's a sign of war when an Indian sends a bullet or an arrow. Pa was trying to keep it from me. Now I know. The Indian was outside talking to Pa. That's why he didn't want me near the window. He gave Pa this bullet. A warning. Well, I'll be ready for him. Just let him show himself again. I'll have Pa's rifle and I'll shoot to kill. <laughs> Thunder is going down some, but the rain's still bad. It ain't the rain, I mind, Sheriff, as much as this mud. Gone it, I'm sinking ankle deep at every step. Yeah, the office is right here. Did you leave the lamp going? Uh huh. The Colonel was in there. He was going to wait there for you. Well, I told you, didn't I? Well, I guess you did, Bill. You need to ask if he saw the outlaws. Too dark to see anything. Uh, what's the matter here? The door is bolted. Uh, well, maybe the Colonel was afraid the crooks had come for him. Hi there. Colonel Jackson, it's the sheriff. Open the door, Colonel, to Sheriff Martin. I couldn't have gone out and left the door locked that way. The bar's on the inside. Well, this window over on the side of the porch is generally unlocked, Sheriff. I'll see it. Sure. What's the matter? Sheriff. Sheriff, look here. Take a look. That's the Colonel sprawl on the floor. Come on. Keep your gun handy and come in after me. He's alive. He's moaning, Bill. Get some water from that bucket over right. there. Right. What happened to him? Has he been shot? Don't look like it. No sign of injury. Uh, what hit me? There, yeah, now, take it easy, Colonel. You're all right. Here's the water. Now, here, Colonel. Take a drink of water. You're not hurt much. Uh, can you tell what happened? Thanks. Uh, take another drink. You'll feel better. Well, yeah. I guess it'll be all right. Well, what happened to you, Colonel Jackson? Stop talking you... so much, Bill. Close that window at the rear before we're flooded out of here. That's the way the sneaking crook got out. Sheriff, I'm Colonel Jackson. Here, this credentials, proof of my identity. Uh, my deputy told me about you. But what happened? I don't know. Here, let me help you to a chair. 
That's it now. Lean on me. That's the ticket. Uh, if you like talking now, I sat here waiting for you. Didn't hear anything at all till it was too late. And I, I heard someone, a faint creak back of me. I turned and someone struck me from behind. That's, that's all I know. Cracky, that don't help much. Hey, Sheriff, doggone it all. Someone has stole a lot of stuff from your desk. What? Look here. All these papers you had here, the ones that dealt with the crooks you were working against, they're all gone. Gone? So that's what the crook was after. Now, wait. Wait until I get my bearings. The head stops spinning and we can talk. <laughs> Sheriff Morton reasoned that whoever had knocked the colonel down had stolen papers from his desk, then escaped by the window in the rear of the office. When the man from the east was able to talk, the lawman and he compared notes. We've been up against an organized gang, Colonel Jackson. They've done everything that can be thought of. It's reached a point where nobody feels safe. Conditions here have become known in the east, Sheriff. That's why I'm here. I'm something of a special investigator. If you read my credentials, you'll see that I'm... Empowered to take whatever action is considered necessary. I, I read that. Even though it means calling in the troopers or appointing new law enforcement officers. You don't seem to have many deputies. Don't have many? No, of course we don't. Doggone it, look here. Wait till I show you in my drawer here. Now, there's Lem Perkins' badge. He's dead. Here's Jim Lefevers. He's dead. And here's Gus Oldman's and Abe Childress. I've lost four deputies since this gang started. Hmm. Have you no clues? No. I had some papers with statements from folks in town, and I had a few leads that I was working on, and notes and things. They've all been stolen. Stolen by the critter that snuck in here by that back window and knocked you out. I see. It seems like a deliberate move on the part of a gang to get everyone to move away from here. But if it keeps on, this won't be anything but a ghost town. Well, I disagree. I think this gang is simply bent on taking as much money and property as it can. Well, I don't know. What benefit would it be to a gang to have everyone leave here? I don't know, but a lot of people have already moved over to Hawkinsville. There's another thing, Mr. Uh, Colonel Jackson. Yes? I've had information of some Easterners behind the whole thing. Might have been that army that was in the stage with you, the one that was killed. An Easterner behind the crimes of these outlaws out here? Preposterous. If that's the way you reason, Sheriff Morton, perhaps you're not as efficient as you might be. I'm just telling you what was told to me, that's all. This fellow's supposed to prove who he is to the rest of the gang by a silver dollar that's been polished smooth on one side. There's some lettering on that smooth side. When did you hear this, Sheriff? Well, I got it in sort of a roundabout way. I... Oh, doggone it. See who that is, Bill. Right. Who's that? Me, Indian. He want to see Sheriff. It's plenty important. Open door. Yeah, let him in. The chances are there's been another holdup or something. Uh, I'll see that he don't waste none of our time. Well, Redskin, what's on the line? Oh! Great gun! Who fired that shot? Protect me. Where can I hide? There's someone over there, Sheriff. That's where the shot I came from. I got him. I got him, boss. Betty, what the tarnation are you doing? Yeah. Let me lift, lift this Redskin and put him over here where he can be spread out. Paul, oh, oh, are you all right? He didn't get you, did he? Betty, you'd better have a doggone good reason for shooting as you done. A reason for being out of the house in the first place. But he was after you, Paul. I know he was. Now, I told you I saw him outside our house, and there's no use trying to keep things from me. I knew he was talking to you. He was warning you. He gave you a bullet. I saw the bullet. What? You tried to fib out of it, but I knew you were up to something more than looking for tobacco. You see, I looked in that jar. Betty, by thunderation, I ought to tan your hide. But it's true, isn't it? I knew you were in danger, so I came out here to make sure you weren't caught unaware. When I saw the engine at the door, I, I fired. But hang it all. Oh, if you only hadn't done it. Betty, doggone it all, I know that redskin. His name is Cardo. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
continue our story. Betty explained why she had fired at Tonto, while Bill, the deputy, laid the unconscious Indian gently on a sofa at one side of the office. How's he now, Bill? Oh, he's wing, that's all. He'll be all right. Honest, I didn't aim to hurt him bad. I, I just wanted to hit his gun arm. You'd better get for home, Betty, and stay there. Yeah, the bullet just grazed his head. I think it's just clipped the skin a little. Is the colonel still in hiding? Hey, Colonel Jackson. I, uh, I wasn't armed, so I thought it better to keep out of the way. You disarm that red skill? Sure, he won't hurt nobody. Sheriff, he's coming around now. He wants to talk to you privately. All right. Betty, did you hear me? Go home and stay there. You're mixing into something you don't understand. You'd better keep out of it. Pa, I only wanted to protect you. Get bandage and some water, Bill. I'll fix the red skin up. Betty, you do what I said. Oh. Well, all right, then. I'll go. Come over here, Colonel Jackson. The sheriff will be through with the red skin in a minute. This office doesn't strike me as being very efficient. And you not worry. Me not hurt bad. Doggone, I'm sorry about it, Tonto. Mighty sorry. You've got bullets on Lone Ranger. Him tell you, him help. Yeah, he's the one that told me that the head man of the crooks was coming out here and had the silver dollar with him. Oh, that's right. Has there been anything new since I talked to the Lone Ranger? Uh, him at work now. Him ride plenty long way, then come back. Well, why did you come here? You brought information for me, didn't you? That's right. You leave wind in back open. Leave front door open. Savvy. Uh, starting right now, I should leave them open. That's right. Wait then. Bill, uh, the engine wants more air. Get the door open. Yeah, but the rain. Never mind yeah. the rain. Do what I say and open that back window too. Let the air sweep through. Well, all right, if you say so. That's good. Now what? Maybe things happen plenty soon now. You wait. Maybe we catch plenty crook. Are you sure you're all right? But you tell a girl not to shoot again. Not to hit bad. All plan go wrong. She won't shoot again. I'll promise you that. <laughs> There's the door and window. Both wide open. They're good enough. Now we wait. Plenty happen. Plenty soon. As time passed, Tonto regained his strength, but remained quiet on the couch. He watched the dark window at the rear of the room, saw the rain beating upon the floor. Then, turning slightly, he looked out through the doorway at the black night. The sheriff remained at Tonto's side, while across the room, Bill talked to the colonel. Sheriff seems to be spending a lot of time with that Indian. Morton. Yes, sir. I want to speak to you. Yes, sir. I'm coming, Colonel. I'm satisfied that you're not very concerned about these crimes. What? The men who robbed that state, you're still at large. The men who robbed your office is, too. We're working on things. I suppose just because it's raining, the citizens who pay your salary aren't entitled to your efforts. You think I'd better go out in the mud and stomp around looking for footprints or something? This ground won't hold prints, Colonel. What do you propose to do with that Indian? Nothing. I reckon he can take care of himself. The bullets just grazed him. I'm going to sure as shoot and tell Betty a few things when I get home. The idea of her traipsing out in the rain and gunning for a redskin. Doggone it. Right. A shot. Someone shot the lamp. Get under the desk. This way. Down fast. Holy mackerel. What's next? There's a horse. A horse in here. Stop you. Stay where you are in the name of the law. Stop your yelling. He'll find where you are. Shoot him. Shoot him. Do something. Hey, boss. He's moving about in here. Maybe I can get the door closed and trap him in. Why don't you shoot? Let go of my hand. Let me fire. You'll hit one of us. I'll find a lamp. Hey, he's going, Sheriff. He's going out now. Get a light. A light, I say. Hurry and get a light. I'm finding one. Just hold your horses, Colonel Jackson. He might be shot in the dark. Bill will get the light. Uh, there you are. Now we can see. Close that door, Bill. Get it closed. I'll close the window. No more of this sort of thing, no matter who says they want fresh air. Uh, there's the door. There. What in Tunket is going to happen next? What's that you've got, Colonel? A bullet. It was here on the table. Uh, Ginger, it looks like silver. A bullet of silver? Yeah, is that all that was there? Yes. You sure there was nothing else? See for yourself. The top of the desk is bare. Well, it seems like there might have been a note or a letter or something of this sort. Hey, Sheriff, look. Huh? That Indian. He's gone. Yeah, I just noticed it. Where did he go? He must have left while the light was out. I wonder if he went alone or if that man on the horse captured him. Morton and Bill bade the man from the east good night at the entrance to the hotel. Jackson, the colonel, secured a large room in the rear of the first floor. See that I'm not disturbed. I'm tired. I have lots to do tomorrow, and I want a good night's sleep. Outside in the rain, men watched the window of the large rear room. They saw the lamp lighted and saw a shade pulled over the window. All right, Buster, now we move forward. Where's the rest of the boys, Critch? 
You sent him somewhere. I told him to get to the rooms and wait for orders. Come on, there's a gent we got to see in back of that there curtain. Yeah, and the sooner the better. I'm getting anxious for the showdown on this job. The window should be opened a little. Enough for us to stick the barrel of a gun through. Yeah, if it ain't, we'll poke a hole in the glass. We won't do no such thing. You let me handle this. I want no noise. Is it open? Yeah. A couple of inches. Now, wait, I'll open it some more. Hey, what does this mean? Quiet. What gun, huh? Yeah, we're coming in there. Well, come ahead. What's stopping you? Yeah. Ah, we sure are soaking wet. What do you want? We're looking for a certain party it's supposed to be in this room. Well, who are you looking for? He'll know. He's supposed to show us a silver dollar, Savvy. And we're to turn that dollar over to the other side. Not so loud. What if I didn't have any silver well, if dollars? if you didn't have them, you wouldn't be in this room. It's pure luck that I have. I got rid of the silver dollar once. It got to be too dangerous to carry. What are you talking about? When I wrote, I told you to hold up the stage tonight. I had inside information in the East. A special investigator was coming here. His name was Colonel Jackson. Is he a passenger on the stage? Yes, and from him I learned that a man known as the Lone Ranger was going to combat the us. Lone Ranger? I don't like that. It had become known that the head of the organization would identify himself with a certain kind of coin. So when you attacked the stage, I took care of the colonel. I put the coin in his pocket, took his credentials, and assumed his identity when I came here. But you got the coin now. Yes, here it is. Where'd you get it? Someone shot the lights out in the sheriff's office. When the lamp was lighted, this coin was on the desk beside a silver bullet. I was able to get it without being seen. I didn't want the sheriff to get it first. He knew what it meant. What if they find that on you? They won't. I'll get rid of it first. I'll find a way to put it among the possessions of the real Colonel Jackson. Hold on. Did you say a silver bullet? Yes. Why? That's a sign of the Lone Ranger. He's the one that put it there. He put the bullet and the dollar there. He knows about you. He couldn't. How could he? Don't ask me how he knows things. He does, that's all. All right, then. We've got to work fast. We've got to get everyone busy right away. What's he doing at the door? Watch. All right, I've got you. Let me go. The Indian. All right, got him. Shut the door. I thought I heard someone moving outside that door. You, the same Indian. He was in the sheriff's office. Yeah. See if he's got guns. I'll search him. Oh, no, you don't. Trying to put something in your mouth, huh? See what that is, Critch. I just knocked it out in his hand in time. Oh, it's a note of some sort. Let me read it. Hey, boss, did you take something from the sheriff's desk? Yes, I bolted the door while I was there alone. I got some papers the sheriff had around about our work. I burned them in the fireplace. I opened the window to make it look like someone had come in and made believe I'd been knocked out. Listen to this. Tonto, I think the colonel is a fake. How could anyone go into the office and knock him out without leaving wet tracks on the floor? I, I made a terrible slip. And here's more. Now listen to the rest. He says, I've taken the dollar from the dead man. I'll go to the office and leave it. You tell the sheriff to leave the door open and let the colonel have a chance to steal the dollar. If he takes it, follow him. Report to me at Potter's Cave. All of us are meeting there. Why, he suspected. Now he knows. That was why you went there, Redskin. You told the sheriff to let me find the dollar. Uh Uh-huh. And you go right into trap. Critch, do you know where Potter's Cave is? Sure. Get the boys rounded up. You have powder? Yeah, lots of it. They're planning to use blasting powder to blow half the houses sky high when everything else had been done. Get the men in the powder. We're going to blow up Potter's Cave tonight. We'll trap them all there. All the men are working with this, this lone ranger. fast, Betty. My rifle and extra gun belt. Here it is, Bob. Where Potter's you... Cave. When Bill comes, tell him to get there fast. The Lone Ranger's taking hold uh, now. The Lone Ranger? Yes, and listen, honey. He told me the whole thing. Businessmen, crooked ones, want to boost the town of Hawkinsville. They'll make a clean-up selling land if they can get folks there. And they've got other irons in the fire, too. Yes, Pa? Is that why they've been terrorizing everybody? The gang was told it could have all it could steal. An extra pay for damaging property. Oh. But get this. The Lone Ranger found a dead man at the scene of the holdup. He thought it was the colonel. Then he found a badge, a coin, that is, one he'd been told about. Yes? He came to see me, talked to me at the window, without showing himself. You did see the Indian, though. I know I did. He had to make sure the man that came here was the imposter and not the colonel. Well, he made sure of it. We know the man that calls himself Colonel Jackson is the leader of the gang. He's here to pay them off. Now I've got to go, honey. It's the big meeting to end things. Got to get all the deputies and special deputies together. I'll see you later. Cave. Just ahead. All right, 
Lieutenant, what about the blasting powder? Going to light the fuse and drive the wagon into the cave? Oh, yeah. Train up here, man. Oh, 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 oh. It's in light way back in the cave. Good enough. You can't send the wagon back all the way. Is there another entrance to that cave? No. Now, all we got to do is get the wagon in the entrance and let the powder go. <laughs> That'll seal her up. All right. All right. All right, boys. Now, that's enough. Take the horses away and light the fuse. Uh, they hear him? Oh, not back where they are. I've been in that cave, and I know what it's like. Light the fuse now. Maybe you'll not light it. What's that? You heard the Indian. Horton, the sheriff. Hold on your guns, you cop. Hey, get him. Oh, hey, we got him all, boys. Close in. Rope him and shoot him. Quiet, right, Horton. No gunplay. Here's one for you, you polecat. No, 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 don't shoot. I give up. Let me out of this. Let me go. This is all a mistake. The only mistake you scheme and cook are the ones you made. We got the lot of you. Well, Betty, we got them all, including the ringleader. Tell me some more, Pa. Did the Lone Ranger want Tonto to be captured so they'd find that note? Sure he did. And then he left a light in the cave so they think we were all in there meeting. While we captured the polecats as they were trying to blow us up, the Lone Ranger went through the fake colonel's room and got a fortune in folding cash. It'd go to pay folks for some of the damage that gang did. <laughs> it was sure a great roundup. But doggone, I shouldn't be chuckling about things to you. I've got to scold you plenty for taking a shot at Tonto. Oh, I'd take more than a scolding for a chance to meet him. Tonto? No. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.